Shalom, we praise it to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'ashem, Racha, Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great Muslims on all the world, and Shalom to the whole four elect. Um, this video, I haven't got a title for it as of yet, but it will be up uh, when the video is uploaded. But basically, I want to go into um, Esau. And on one thing that's brought up in the camp, I believe I've done a video on this point a while back, but since it got brought up at the camp, I want to go over it again. Because um, I have one key example that um, is quite good as well to, on top of this point. So I'll get straight into the lesson. This is Genesis 25 and 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents now if you know anything the Lord said he brought he made everything in twos I told you in the book of Sarat the 33rd chapter how he made everything in twos alright and these two boys basically revolve around that that double that the most High has always presented upon the earth light and day hot and cold left and right all right or good and evil all right so um esau being a so known today all right sidestepping from his name to escape the burden of the curse upon him all right is known as the local white man to, as the so-called white man today and and jacob all right who um is discontinued from his heritage which um ironically enough plays well into the into the time in the, that we're in the time of evil all right has um jacob has discontinued for his heritage so he's not known all right but it's known as the so-called negroes hispanics and native americans according to day today's um definition of nationalities they're on two opposite sides of the spectrum all right esau being the wicked the bible speaks over the devil and um Jacob being the righteous and the godly of the Bible. Okay. So um these two it tells you it, it describes them, their characteristics, okay? Cause um the most this ain't no book where it's just like, yeah, you just read it and you know. There's elements to this to the to the to every this content to the characters of this book, to the nations in this book, everything that's written inside of the Bible. Okay, but now I want to decide for one main point that really this lesson um, is built upon. All right, and um, so I'm gonna read it again. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter. And that's the main point. Esau was a cunning hunter, right? And the main uh, and it says a man of the field. And the main point we always bring out is that Esau goes out into the back, <laughs> out into the field, basically does hunting. Shoot, um, shooting game, you know, stuffing animals, putting their heads on display, you know, as trophies and whatnot. That's his. That's his, his character. Okay, warfare, all those type of things, survival tactics and whatnot. All right, but um, that word cunning is a key descriptive word in in a, to allow you to understand who Esau is. All right, it says Esau was a cunning hunter. So I'm gonna go into the lush one Kodash, which is really what the Esau calls a strong concordance. All right, and pull up this word cunning. As you can see, it's H three o five three o four five. All right, you die. All right, the word there, you die. All right. Now, if you see, it says no. Translates no no knowledge, perceive, shoe, tell, wis, understand certainly. But now when we go to the outline of biblical usages, it says to know. Alright. So in order for you to be cunning, that means you, you have to know. Alright. And in order to be known, and in order to know you, you have to be taught, right? But in Esau's case, the way he's taught is on the left hand side, alright? He's taught, you know how we have divine intervention. Esau has um, 
the same thing, divine intervention, but on the left hand side, and he utilizes it by way of the flesh. He studies your your behaviors, your study, your traits and and behaviors and whatnot, and then that's how he's able to know. And as it says here, to know, learn, to know, to perceive, all right, to perceive and see, find out and discern, uh, to discriminate, distinguish. There's another point here that. Mm. Okay, this is the main one, one of the main ones to know a person carnally, right? Because that's Esau's main trait and tactic and skill, right? Uh, there's one here I was, I was trying to find. I think it may be in the Genesis lexicon. Bear with me one moment. There you go. That's it. So, um, just check this to make sure. All right. So, it says in the strong definitions, it says, you die, all right, a primitive route to know properly to a certain by seeing, all right. You know, they talk about different ways to learn. One of the main ways you will learn is by hand, all right? You have people that learn by hand or, you know, they have they learn but through hands-on experience, all right? And that's what Esau has basically done. All the knowledge that he has right now of wickedness, the ability to manipulate people cunningly, all right, to be a cunning hunter, is done by learning by hand. And this is shown by the word Yadai, which I really believe goes back to yad, okay, which means hand, because it says to learn, it says it by here, to, to a certain by seeing. And how are you going to learn something by seeing? You see it being done, and then you practice it yourself. Or you attempt it, you attempt to do something, and you learn on the job, basically, all right? So now, this was done in the same case, a good example is in the case of um, um, which I'm gonna read now, which is done in the case of the garden, right? When Esau first come upon the earth, right? So this is Genesis, the third chapter. I'm gonna read down to. Oh my days, lucky. I'm going to read the first five chapter verses. Sorry. And it says Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. All right. More cunning. That subtle and cunning, similar words. Let me even check if it's actually the same word. So. See? It's all up in there, man. See? It's all up in there. Alright. So, um, funny enough, and I didn't know that. So now, reading on, it says, um, it was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord power had made. And he said unto the woman, now that's, and that's Esau's key trait. The blessing of the sword is one thing, but his key trait is his cunningness. Right, and our key trait is a what wisdom, all right? Which basically they complement each other because his is on the left hand side, ours on the right hand side, all right? Without each having each other, you wouldn't be able to identify each other, if you understand. Without having hot, you wouldn't be able to know what cold is. Without having light, you wouldn't have know what dark is. And, and without having um, wickedness, you wouldn't know what righteous is. So anyway, reading on, and he said unto the woman, Yea, have you how said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the, of the garden. And you can see that he's a serpent, because why is he talking to another man's wife? All right? What, what is the reason why he's talking to the, Sir Adam's wife? There's no, there would be no reason. 
for a man to speak to another man's wife, and it's, it, especially of something of this nature, all right? But for guile, all right? Verse 3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the, the garden, Yahweh hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die, all right? Which was true, all right? In order to become... Okay, I'm going to read this, actually. It says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For Yahweh knoweth, doth know, that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So how was he privy to this information when they didn't know this information? Because he made it his business to know it. Because why? He's a serpent. He's more subtle than the beast in the field. He, uh, it doesn't say how he found it out, but he was privy to that knowledge because he made it his business to make it his knowledge. He saw that tree and and, and was was intrigued as to why. Um. It, it was as 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 so it could be, All right. For y'all doth know that they eat there, that then your eyes shall be open, and he shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, and that's what really quant what makes you. A God, all right, a power, a judge, you have to know good and evil, all right. So they only knew of good, but they didn't know of evil, all right. And that's the, the that's where they didn't, you know, showing you how silly Eve is. They didn't sit there and think, well, if I if I if I'm gonna know good and evil, how would I have to what would how would I know evil? That's the question they should have asked. And it's all in what you would have to do. You'd have to go against what the Lord told you to do, which is evil. All right? Simple as that. And when a woman saw that the tree was was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, you know, he put her onto it to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband, which with her, and he did eat. All right? And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right, but um, you know, that's the point. The serpent was subtle, man. He knew what he was doing. He was cunning. All right, and he caused the fall of man. All right, really through Eve, but you know, the fall of man come through a woman. But it's the subtlety and the kindness of this man was what enabled to, to them to for it to happen, and it's the same with Esau, man. Um, I'm gonna finish on the scripture. Basically, um, Esau. Uh, Where I need to go. Excuse me. Uh, one second. That's it. And it's the same with Esau. Esau is basically highly wicked, man. And hey, if Esau had it with in in his power, he'd he basically just bring total destruction to this earth. Okay, so I'm going to read this in Matthew 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as not since the beginning of the world to this time. So what did I read about? I read about the beginning of the world when, when, when death first entered into the world by way of who? The, the, the serpent, all right? Which that's the old serpent was bound for a thousand years and loose for a little season. As it tells you in the book of Revelations. And this is that little season where that serpent has been loosed, okay, to bring great tribulation. Because it tells you in the book of Proverbs, the 16th chapter, that the, the wicked is created for the day of um for the day of evil. And that's the day of, that's the time that we're in. Solomon knew about that. He mentioned it, he said to everything there is a season, a time under the sun. So anyway, I'll read this again and, and read to the point. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days shall 
should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. All right. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. All right. So if time could just flow in this wickedness, there wouldn't be no flesh to be saved because that's Esau working in diligence to fulfill his, his duty that the Most High has fine-tuned him to do. But the Lord had to what, set up the righteous to cut off that, that time, to allow it to be established, the righteousness upon the earth, all right, for the elect's sake, which is for the glory of Yahweh Ba'ashem El Shai's sake, all right? So with that, you know, understand the, the lesson is to understand that this man is cunning, cunningly deceptive, all right? And he's been since inception from the time of the serpent to the time that we're presently in, all right? And he makes it his business to know and understand these things. Why Why does he do that? Because he's a carnal count of, he's the flesh, the, the, the worldly, the flesh counterpart of the devil. And the best example to allow you to understand that function that he has of studying your ways and being cunning is what did, the, what did Satan do, his, his spiritual counterpart do in the fourth dimension? He was studying Job. When the Most High asked him, have you considered my servant Job? What did he say? He said, yeah, I see him. <laughs> but you got, you got, you got, you got, um, <laughs> You got a, what's that word? Um, a hedge around him. Let that hedge go and I'll show you that he ain't the man that you believe he is. And he, he said, yeah, do your thing, but don't kill him. Let's see if he turns as he turns against me. All right. So that that's the, the point being is the fact that he was, he was aware of Job and he wanted to sink his teeth into Job. Same way with Esau on the, on the earth, man, because that same spirit is inside this man inside of the, the vehicle of flesh all right and he's doing the same thing so with that man i pray you're edified inshallah